When choosing which golf ball to buy, often people can be misled. In today's video, we're gonna show you what you should look for and what you shouldn't look for when buying new golf balls. Let's do it, and let's do it now. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson. Welcome to this YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna to talk to you about what you should look for and what you shouldn't look for when buying golf balls. Chris, how are you? Very good, yourself? Very good. So Chris, you spent a lot of time with some of the best golfers in the world. Yep. And often, when choosing golf balls, they don't always look at things that maybe us amateurs look for. No, correct. So today we'll discuss it. Should we have a bit of a match as well? Let's have a bit of a match. So what golf ball are you using today, Chris? I've got the ball that we tested a couple of weeks ago, which is the Bridgestone Tor BX, which yep. said on the tin, or the box even, yep. that it was for people with club head speed around about 105 miles an hour. Yeah, and interestingly, I'll let you tee off and I'll, you won't believe what ball I'm using today. Oof, I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> Yep. Very loose. So guys, today I'm using a golf ball which I managed to buy in an airport for quite cheap. This is the Callaway SR3 ball. Chris, what does it say on that box? It says number one, moderate swing speed. Number two, athletic swing speed. Number three, Tor level swing speed. Tor level swing speed. So if we just have a look, have a, if we just have a quick look at this box. Now this could be quite misleading for some people. So yes, it's a Callaway Premium ball. We know that, Ooh. and it is the Speed Regime Three. So tall level swing speed. First of all, I think tall level swing speed is more than 105, isn't it? But correct, it is. Is that all you want to look for when choosing a golf ball? No, I would say not. And that was very similar to the Bridgestone said. 105 miles an hour, but it didn't tell us much more. No, right, let's make, let me get teed off. I've not got many of these, so I'll try not to lose them. Or the video will be invalid, Chris. Null and void. Shot. I'll tell you what, though. How good was that? Down the middle. Maybe it's the perfect ball for me, 105. The perfect ball. I would have thought it. I'd never heard of them, to be fair. And it is quite a funny one, this one, because you don't often see people get fitted for golf balls anymore in a track man based on numbers. No. A lot of the time, you might look at spin rate sometimes, you might even look at trajectory, but you don't always look at club head speed, ball speed, and how much distance you can get. Now, there's a really good reason for that, because if you primarily choose your golf ball on your driver swing speed, Chris, how much good stuff are you potentially missing out on? Well, if you think, I mean, your driver probably on most golf courses we're hitting 14 times, and how many if shots? That. And then on on average, your average golfer's having 90 shots, so it's a very small percentage. It's we're a facing. tiny window, hoping you might creep out an extra two yards, three yards at max. Yeah, which most of the time is two or three yards further into the trees. Yeah, so let's have a quick discussion on what maybe you should look for on top of that. And now you might find Chris is a little bit biased in this because Chris is a short game coach and you spend the majority of your time with putters, wedges and things like that. Mm -hmm. But that's the majority of the shots we play on a golf course. So surely if you are going to choose the right ball for you, it isn't just about the big dog, is it? No, correct. I mean, for me, the biggest area you should be looking at is your scoring irons, which are probably from 160 yards, 150 yards in. Yeah. So that's where we're trying to hit the ball close or close as we can and give ourselves a realistic chance of getting up and down or getting out of there with a birdie. So seeing how it reacts on the green and how you can fly it into a green, for me, is the most important area you should be looking at. Again, that's not just because of the short game stuff, but that's where we're going to lower most people's handicaps as opposed to getting them an extra two yards. Absolutely. So say if you don't have, so say if you don't have the power to generate a lot of spin with your irons, or indeed with your wedges, you might want a ball with a different cover, maybe with an Ionima cover as opposed to a urethane cover, that's yeah. going to launch a little bit higher and give you the stop aside from spin. And that's it, and there's a lot of people who are on the opposite spectrum who get too much spin, and they need something that gives them less spin when it's coming into the greens, because it's great creating loads of spin, but if you're landing a, a ball next to the flag and it's spinning back 20 yards, 
very much like McElroy's done for years. Yeah. It's very tough. You're going to leave yourself longer putts, and it's going to be very hard to lower your handicap and shoot lower scores. Not a lot of run today. <laughs> now, obviously, a huge factor in this as well is budget, is price. If you can't afford a premium golf ball, you're not going to buy premium golf balls. You might kind of rely on finding them or even on twos competitions and things like that. So bearing in mind how much you spend on golf balls, it might come down to how many golf balls you lose. If you like Chris and you shed them for fun, you might not want to... Different golf ball every day. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I'll be good. Has that got to sit? Look at this comeback. Spun it back down Ooh. the slope. See there, I got the landing angle and the spin. Oh, oh. anyone have thought you'd played before. And you see guys, I always think the budget debate when it comes to a golf ball is one of the most interesting debates in golf because it just so works out that the people who lose potentially the least amount of golf balls, your better player, get stuck with the most expensive balls. Yes, very true, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things. It's all dependent on your budget. And for me, it's about, like I say, testing those golf balls. Don't just go on, oh, everybody uses a Pro V, so I'll use a Pro V. Or everyone's using a, a Pix ball now because James Robinson Golf uses a Pix ball. Get out there and test it, and you don't always end up having to go for the most expensive. Yeah. Especially at this time of year. Well, absolutely. Bit of a mud ball. It's still all right, though. Mm. No, that was a mud ball because that moved a lot. Yeah. And another interesting topic of debate that I've seen for years and years when teaching people and talking about golf balls, because so often people come for driver fittings, iron fittings, hopefully now putter fittings as well and wedges, but they never really talk about the golf ball too much. And when they do, oh, Bridgestone had a day and my driver swing speed was 106, so I'm using this one. Oh, it just doesn't seem quite right for me that. I think if you speak to the guys at Titleist and TaylorMade who do golf ball fitting days they'll take every golf ball they have out on the course with you yeah and you can test them around the greens on the greens obviously with a launch monitor as well if you want to but for me that's just a better way of doing it yeah and that's a lot of what they do on the tour so the tour guys they'll go out with a player they'll get you to hit some drives with two different balls maybe three different balls go okay which flight do you prefer right into the green now what do you prefer around and what feels better off the putter because the putter again is one of those things you don't take into account when it's yeah. coming to a ball but if it feels like concrete off the putter you're, you're going to lose confidence in your putting nice bit of stoppage there chris for yours yes yours. mine came all the way back off that bank i really enjoyed that one maybe this is the right ball for me after all with uh, those shots Pick it up. So guys, you all know how important it is to us both that you're a part of these videos. So do us a favor, get in the comments and let us know which golf ball do you use? Why do you use it? And how many do you buy at a time? Do you buy a sleeve of three? Do you try and save a couple of pound and buy a box of 12? Or do you go full on Costco and try and buy about a million at a time? Kirkland's. Yeah. Ooh, double breaker. A little bit. So this ball's performed off the tee. It's performed into the green. Will it perform with the putter? That felt so hard. <laughs> Sounded very, very firm. Yeah. I didn't enjoy that. Oh. Well, we'll see it in as well. Will we? Oh. Oh, will we? Get the flag out soon. Take your time. Be the ball. It does sound... That sounds very... Pinnacle-like. Yeah. See, that's one thing that I found is, with the Pro V1X, is that felt very firm off the putter as well, which was a big put-off. Yeah. Putter, put off. Oh, oh. And you see, that's where for me, I have actually used this ball before, so I knew to expect that to feel hard. But if I've gone for a fitting or if I've just looked at the box and it said swing speed of over 105, I'll buy a dozen of them. And then I hit the first put and it feels like that. I'm going to feel a little bit mm, hard done by. Yeah. Really, or misled because a lot of people on the box, it says great feeling, longer distance, great feel around the greens. And then you get out there and it sounds really firm. Yeah. And you're like, well, I've just bought a dozen and I can't put with them now because it feels and sounds terrible. But also there, if you're going to say this is a good feeling golf ball or a soft feeling golf ball, a lot of that can be down to personal preference as well. It can be down to how you 
who perceive the sound of that ball as well because sound is feel when it comes to golf balls. And that's the big thing if you're getting fitted a lot of the times is people will do it indoors because into a simulator and a Just lot of be, times because it's England and it's raining and horrible it's England and it's raining but there that can throw you off so the acoustics Ooh. see that using big Acoustic. words now um, <laughs> not made for these trousers today were you the cream bad boys now <laughs> And you see, the idea behind this video isn't to call out any of the golf ball manufacturers, it's not to call out any of the big name brands, it's to say, be careful what you read, be careful what avenue you go down when it comes to marketing. And if you do have the chance to test maybe a Callaway Chrome Soft against Titleist Pro one against TaylorMade TP5, against some of the other golf balls on the market, and even some of the cheaper brands, that's always going to be more beneficial as well, because I know people who use Titleist golf balls because they use a Titleist driver. Yep. And that makes no sense at all. Now it's very much the same, obviously it's a lot of marketing goes into your woods, everyone says, oh this new driver goes further. Golf balls, it seems to be a level playing field, they all say better distance and great feel around the greens, but it's definitely something to test out, maybe through the winter, buy a different sleeve each week, it's not scoring, but you can see right which one feels the best off your irons, if you're keeping your irons, which one feels good around the greens and which one doesn't, it saves you getting into Wasting money. Lovely. Little toey dipper back into the middle. Toey slinger. Wonderful. With a bridge stone. Send this straight past you. This is going to wave as it goes past yours. I wouldn't get that fired up. Oh, bunker. That is massive. That's nowhere near the bunker. Bunker. It's too wet for that. Oof, right in the face. Out of interest though, since we've started doing these Talking Balls episodes, this Callaway SR3 and the Bridgestone that Chris is using today are probably the golf balls I've played the best golf with. And you're playing quite well with the Bridgestone as well. Yeah. <laughs> There's something behind the right ball for you off the tee, definitely. But, I, I mean, I almost like I'm contradicting everything we've just said then, but it certainly does give you a little bit of confidence to know that it's the right construction for you, it's the right ball for you to get off the tee. And that's miles past you. Well, it wasn't my finest strike, but it all comes down yet again to the scoring irons. Yeah, and butter. And bread and butter. Well, Chris, that's a missed fairway for you, another one. And I'm, uh, I dare say I'm a couple of yards past you, but in the... I was going to say, that's miles past me, was it? <laughs> Well, you see, though. if I wasn't using the golf ball design for 105 mile an hour plus, maybe it would have been be behind you. Oh, well, true. Right, let's fly one in out of this rough. Nice. Oh, that could be very close, actually. Could be, of course it is. How do you find the flight on that Bridgestone? Uh, very good, it doesn't spin up too much. Again, feels very soft throughout the bag, so especially with the putter and chip shots, feels very soft. And off the, the woods, it's not spinning up and I don't feel like I'm losing any distance, which is the main thing. Still not past me though. True, just. One thing that's interesting about this Callaway ball as well is that it doesn't actually look white. If you put it next to different golf balls, it actually looks more cream. Ooh, they did used to have a few like that. Yeah. The Hex always used to be a bit like that. Yeah, I must say, again, that's something I'd be a little bit disappointed with. I, I prefer it looking nice and pearly white. There's a worm cast right behind that. You know, you can imagine it's coming straight up into your eye. Splatter. Yeah, not for me, thank you. I'm gonna draw it in off the lie, Chris, and I'm gonna get inside you. Doubt it. Tell you what. Did it draw? Yeah. Ooh, oh, it'll be close. It's on the line. I mean, another part of this as well, and it's almost a bit of an elephant in the room, is the whole marketing behind golf balls. Golf balls are a huge part of all the big manufacturers' revenue streams, so they put a lot of money into the marketing behind them. That's why all your tour players will use the big name balls and the big name equipment. But when it comes to the marketing, sorry, Chris, I've got a little bit, I've interrupted myself there. They're all right, aren't they? I think mine's the closest. Do you reckon they pay us big money to use these balls after them? Highly doubtful with how many we might lose. <laughs> but when it comes to the marketing, Chris, it's not always... I wonder how many people go and play the wrong ball because Rory McIlroy... You remember when, uh, obviously, Nike were about? Yeah. How many people were using those balls? And they were terrible, weren't they? Was it the RZN or something? Resin or Resin. some... Yeah. 
Yeah, so, yeah, that's what I find. A lot of people just buy, you say, your, your Pro V1X because the favourite player uses it, or the Pro V1 because that's where the marketing is. When you look at the rest of the golf balls, it all seems very much the same. And like I've said earlier, it's every ball goes further, great distance, every ball's got a nice feel around the green. So how do you break that down? I think you're closer than me there. Correct, as always. Disappointing. Yours must have been close to going in because it's obviously run down here, hasn't it? I've gone for the old drop and stop again. Drop and stop, plenty of spin. Ready for a concrete feeling. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to this. Ball off the port. Well, you walked it. It weren't a bad putt, was it? <laughs> Good pace. The, and you know that. what? This ball, I mean, this isn't a... These balls aren't on the market anymore. And I can sort of see why, because although I've played really well with it tee to green, and I did do in the video that I filmed the other day with them, I couldn't use it for that reason. Oh, we didn't learn from mine. Didn't move as we'll see much that. as I thought. <laughs> right. Par four, 423 yards. Difficult hole. You mm. want to make sure you're using the right ball on this one, Chris. Correct. Especially we've seen the pin on this one as well, so we'll need a lot of spin. Yeah, control. pin at the back, isn't it? And you do not want to be in that bunker there that's just over Chris's head. That is position Z. Another great drive. Tiny bit left, but... It's avoiding often. that bunker. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to go over the bunker then. And I suppose another point is, how much difference does a golf ball really make? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a golf professional, I'm a golf teacher, and I always think people should spend the time to get fitted for your equipment, and that means your clubs and your golf ball. But if you're just getting into golf, don't go spending loads of money on something you're probably going to lose three, four, maybe five, six, a round of. If you foxy even more at the minute. <laughs> foxy, sorry, but we know you do. And Gaz. And oh, Gaz loses a dozen a round, and Gaz is supposed to be a pro. But save your money and go and get some lessons. Use some cheap balls. It doesn't really make that much difference if you're just starting off. Just use something consistent, Chris. Yeah. The worst thing you can do is keep chopping and changing, isn't it? I would always say use the same ball. Oh, that's left. Ooh, Sit. It's hang, hanging on. It's social. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's long enough to be all right, isn't it? But Didn't want to go over the bunker as well? Well, I've opened it up now, haven't I? Very true. And that really is one of the gems that we hope you take from this video, guys. All we're trying to do is help you save money by not buying the wrong golf ball, yep. but be consistent with it. Choose a ball that maybe you're going to use throughout the winter. Obviously, we might go down to a more budget golf ball in the winter because you're not playing in your medals, you're not playing in handicap yeah. competitions. But then also in the summer, maybe decide on a ball and stick with that ball. It doesn't always have to be a Pro V1. It doesn't always have to be a TP5 or a Chrome Soft. Use a ball that's going to help your pocket but also help your golf as well. The worst thing you can do is go, nope, they were rubbish, I'm now gonna move on to them. Nope, they didn't work. Because yeah. 99 times out of 100, I'm gonna say out of 10 then, <laughs> it's not the golf ball's fault. And this uh, is a prime example, Chris, why you don't wanna be using too expensive balls if you spray it like <laughs> me. <laughs> Where's that? Not looking good, this, is it? No. <laughs> Wrap it up there. Well, it's a different way to end a video. Yeah. That's one gone to the autumnal leaves, unfortunately, Chris. And you know what? That proves our point as good as anything, doesn't it? The amount of times I lose golf balls, a few and far between, I'm quite upset I've lost that one because I've only got three of them. So all you've got to do is hit this and not lose it, and the match is yours. Keep the fans going. You have to finish the hole, really, but we're not putting through that. Delightful. I think we'll round it up there, guys. Thank you so much for watching. really hope this is helpful for you we hope you've enjoyed the video but we also hope you found it a bit more insightful mm. than some of our videos guys if you have enjoyed it smash that subscribe button go and check out chris dennis golf for your short game requirements and apart from that i'll see you tomorrow and i'll see you probably next week <laughs> next week <laughs>